Hi everyone and uh, welcome to SVVR and this session about eye tracking in VR. My name is Joakim and I work for Toby. Uh, we are the market leader in eye tracking globally and we've been doing this for 16 years. Uh, and uh, I'm here to talk a little bit about the future of eye tracking and why eye tracking is the next step, natural step for VR. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about the use cases, the main use cases, and show some footage and videos on what kind of experiences you can drive in your content and, uh, and, and go through that as well. So, and all of the things that I'm going to show here today is also available for demo in our booth down in Hall 1. So you're all very welcome to come by and try that out. It's great fun. So, in, so 2016 was a pivotal year for us because that's the year when we moved eye tracking from something that was predominantly a professional or scientific thing into the consumer market. And, and what we did was to integrate the technology in, inside consumer electronics. We saw the launch of PCs with integrated eye tracking, but also integrated eye tracking into uh, uh, screens, uh, displays, and also into phones. And for us, that's super important because making eye tracking available in, in commercially available products is, is a challenge and, and something that, that everyone needs to learn how to do. And, and we're leading that process. But also, uh, what we did was that we launched, together with game developers, a set of really nice titles on PC gaming. And so we've been working with game developers and studios for some time now in order to get the content going and in order to actually make you know, eye tracking an integrated part in gameplay. But of course, there are many different application areas for eye tracking, especially in VR. What also happened last year was that there was major acquisitions being done. The some of the large players made investments in people and technology regarding eye tracking. And it just goes to show how important that is for, for the marketplace. But also, some other trends that happened last year was that ID verification of users and the, and the push for AI actually took really great strides. And, and all those areas are dependent on knowing as much as possible about the user. And knowing about what the user intent is, is very, very, is very connected to eye tracking. And I'll go through that more in, more in detail. So for the past one and a half years, we've been working quite a lot on our VR product, uh, the eye tracking for VR product. So we, we have integrated into the Vive uh, as a first step and we're quite happy with, with where we are with that technology platform right now. So right at this point, we have offerings for both tethered and untethered uh, VR devices. And, uh, so, and, and we're engaging with OEMs and also ODMs in the world in order to bring this into consumer devices in a foreseeable future. So now it's time to start thinking about content. And the main use cases that we, we want to support are, for instance, foveated rendering. Foveated rendering is a way to save on graphics processing because of the fact that you can render the things that people actually look at in high resolution. And the things that, in the, that the person is not looking at, you can render that with lower quality, thus saving the amount of rendered pixels in the, in the HMD. And that's super important because, especially in the untethered place, space, it's important to save on graphics processing. And even in the tether space as well, because of the fact that the displays are becoming more and more high res, there's additional pressure all the time on saving on graphics processing. But also, because of the fact that we know exactly where the pupil of the user is in 3D space, we can adapt graphics so that uh, you render uh, the graphics as where, uh, corresponding to where the pe person is looking. And that means that distortions and such things, artifacts, due to the fact that you uh, don't know where they are looking, that, that amount will go down. And that means that you can have a better graphical experience in, in graphics experience in the, in the HMD. 
but simple things like helping the user position the HMD correctly. Because of the fact that we know where the eyes are, we also can help the user position the headset correctly so that the eyes are in the optical axis of the HMD, which is also important for the experience of, of VR. But then, mostly important, I think, is enabling interactions in content. And that's, I'm going to show you some examples of that and, and show you some films as well. Because what we really want to do is make VR truly immersive. Let's face it, because of the fact that you know where the person is looking, then you can make content that is truly interactive. And we humans, we do not move our heads like this in order to show our intent, as VR is today. Instead, if I want to show my intention to you, I, I glance at you, and if I'm going to, then I move my head and look at you. And that's how it's done in the real world. And to be able to emulate that and make software aware of where my intent is, that's the way we do that. Because in real life, if I intend to interact with something, I look at it. So, and in the end, we want to create experiences that actually works the way that we humans naturally interact. And now for the examples. So, avatar interaction. Typically, in VR, uh, an avatar looks like this. So, it has this thousand mile stare. Uh, the eyes are fixed looking straight ahead and it basically doesn't really feel like that the, 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 that the avatar is real. But imagine a multiplayer environment where the avatars look like this. You can see the eye movement of the avatar and, and you can notice blinks and so on. And especially for those kind of environments with social cues, then you can get something that feels real. And, and, and that's going to be super important. I'm going to show you an example of that. This is an implementation of, of this kind of representation in a game called uh, Rec Room. And let's roll the film. And this is just one example. I think that we're going to see quite a lot of experiences that have this kind of interaction, especially in multiplayer. One other thing that, that we usually do in VR is teleport, teleporting in, in different ways. Usually that's done using the hand controller, pressing buttons, aiming some kind of beam into an area. But with eye tracking, what you can do is, is just look at teleportation stations. So this example shows some, the, so the cylinders here are teleportation stations. So the way for me to, to, to teleport into an area is just look at the area and press one button. So th this might not sound uh, very efficient, but it is super intuitive because that's how we want to, to do it in real life. I would love to be able to teleport, but yeah, that's the cool thing with VR. Uh, and also, of course, natural interaction. This, this is, let's imagine that you want to do a simple task like throwing a stone. In VR today, the, how good I am at throwing a stone or, and hitting what I'm aiming at is just a function on how good I am at moving my hand controller. But in real life, if I want to throw a stone at something, I look at it first. And in a game, then you know that, okay, I'm looking at the bottle, that bottle over there, and I'm throwing. Then I can uh, assist the user to hit the thing that I am looking at. So in this demo, there is a pink stone that is case aware. So I, first of all, I can pick it up just by looking at it and pressing a button, and it comes to me. And then I look at a bottle and I throw. And in this demo, of course, we, we help the user quite a lot, but any content developer can can, can vary the level of help you give in order to make it more real. That means that what you look at is what you actually are aiming at. And there are many, many, many variations of that theme. Uh, but the, the key thing here is that you know the intent of the user 
so then you can adapt your experience accordingly. One other thing, in, in, we call this rapid selection, but basically it's about, in VR today, you aim by using your head like this. And, and the head is quite slow, but the eyes are really, really quick. So, and, and we are really quick with our, eyes, with our eyes to look at things and lock on to things. So in this game demo, I'm locking on to the missiles that are coming at me just by looking at them, pressing the button, and then guiding the missiles back at the attacking drones. So what that, this means is that I can really, really quickly switch and choose in between different objects in the game and quickly, quickly guide back. And, and that allows for really fast-paced gaming. And it also allows for a huge reduction of head movement. So if you look at, you, if you go down the hall here and look at the, the people using uh, HMDs, you see a lot of really drastic head movements like this. And that's because you're only aiming with your head. But when you use your eyes, then the, the head movement becomes much more natural and limited. And that reduces the, both the nausea and also the, the, the strain that you feel in your neck from using, uh, using VR. So it's a, it's a key thing. And then intelligent interfaces. So let's look at some. Uh, in this demo, we also have a representation of where the gaze are. So the small clouds you see it, is where, where the eye tracker believes you, that the person is looking. So we're showing some, some different examples of how we can make objects interact with you. So the drones, they react to my gaze. When I look at one of the drones, it just, in this case, shows an image. But the other one actually show, gives me some money, which is great. So, uh, because there's also a shopping experience here. So, but menu choosing, for instance, is, is something that becomes very, very easy. I look at what I want to buy here and I press the button and there you go, there's my drone delivery. And, and now I see, oh, as you could see there, just by looking at the object, I could then manipulate it using my hand controllers. And the thing here is that you can so rapidly choose which object to interact with, so it's starting to become feels natural and you can start juggling huge objects just by shifting your gaze in between the objects and manipulating for instance using a hand controller yeah and also this session was uh, we recorded uh, as because of the fact we also rec can record the gaze signal all throughout the session we also know what people were looking at all through the session and, and uh, we have a graphical representation here in this demo from, from the session that just been. So the, the pink lines you see in the demo is a representation of where did the user look during the session. And that's very, very important because you can analyze game behavior. What things did the people, do people interact with? What things do they never interact with? What was very interesting and what wasn't interesting? And that has many, many applications. For instance, measuring the attention of all different kinds of experiences. It could be video experiences, it could be gaming experiences, it could be any kind of experience. By measuring the eye tracking signal and because everything is time stamped, you can correlate that with what was happening on the screen and then you can really learn about what's efficient, what's not, which, adverti which advertisements did they see, which one did they not see. So there, there's a huge promise in, in that area as well. And, and whilst designing a game, this import information, or a game, or an experience, or an application, this kind of information is super important. Because then you know what's efficient and what's not efficient. So at GDC, we, uh, we announced that we were starting our prod program of working with game developers pr predominantly handing out uh, or providing them with, with dev kits. It's Vives that we have retrofitted with, with uh, Tobi eye tracking uh, in order for them to start developing uh, experiences in their games. So I'm happy to announce that we, we have done quite a bit of work together with the Solus project in order for them to integrate eye tracking into the Solus project VR game. Uh, and that's super fun for, for many reasons. Uh, for, firstly, because of the fact that they have uh, um, a PC implementation since, since before. So it was 
dead on simple for them to work on the VR implementation of the same game and integrating eye tracking in that. So, and, and what we've done in this game is adding teleportation, uh, object interaction, and also, and, and also aiming and selecting as well. So we have that demo as well in, in our booth. And if you're used to playing solos, um, I really wonder, would like to urge you to come by and have a look as well. There's a learning curve for that game, so, <laughs> so, so if, you, if you know the game already, come by and have a look at it. We're really happy about that. And all throughout this year, we will continue to drive content in order for it to have, so that there is content available, games or other content available, when we will start, when uh, at the time when we will start seeing uh, HMDs with, uh, with the eye tracking integrated in them so that there will be content when the HMDs come. So, looking at a little bit about the software side, uh, there is a challenge, of course, with the marketplace being a little bit fragmented. So that's why I'm so happy that the, the work in creating a standard API for developers inside Kronos has started. And we're taking part of that because of the fact that we know that it is going to be very important to have eye tracking inside the, the first versions of the API when it comes. So, so and, and because we know that it's going to be a crucial part of content in the, in the future. So I urge you all to come by the Toby booth and play around. And, and if you are a developer of some kind or if you do a professional uh, implementation of something, uh, we, we are starting our program in order to sell these kind of uh, prototypes uh, to, to, uh, to partners. And uh, so please come by and talk to us and, uh, and uh, sign up. And then we see if we can start doing some cool stuff together. And, uh, so, and if you want to know a little bit more about how our tracking actually works and what, is, what it takes to, to make that happen in, on, in HMDs, you're so much welcome to come by on Friday and I'll go into some more details. So I still have two minutes, which is great. So if there are any questions, I can uh, take them now. So the question was, is the eye tracking limited to the size of the object? Uh, I would say that, that the, the eye tracking, uh, depend, the size of the object and the distance to the object is more dependent on what kind of accuracy and precision you have in, in, the, in the system. Uh, but we are at really decent levels on, eye tr on precision and accuracy right now. So that means that objects that are quite far away can be identified or selected. So in the demos, if you come down, you can see for yourself how, what kind of sizes we're talking about. But it's, uh, it's not, they don't have to be huge. They don't have to be very close in order for you to interact with them. Yeah. So, uh, so, so the question was, when we will see these implemented in commercially available HMDs? Um, that's uh, always a tricky question because we're, 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 uh, we're um, uh, we're a publicly listed company, but I would say uh, earlier than many people believe. I would say that hopefully or quite probably we will start seeing uh, the early versions of, uh, of uh, eye tracking enabled HMDs in a year or so. Yeah, and then I'm, uh, then I'm uh, particularly vague, but that's, uh, that's, where, that's, that's the kind of time frame that we're looking at. So the question was, do we have any implementation for the HoloLens? Oh, we would love to have that. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, and also, in a more general uh, way, uh, what happens with AR, which is sort of the next step of this. Uh, I'm just going to stop this, not to distract you. So AR is equally as important area as VR, and, and, and we are developing our platform to support that area as well. There are multiple players in the marketplace do, having AR products going, and we are engaging with them for, to integrate eye tracking as well, and being as less particular as I can be for that, for that question. So I think I'm out of time. I'm sorry that I didn't get the time to answer. I will be around here outside, so if you have any more questions, I'll, I'll be happy to answer them. And uh, if you are here on Friday, you're so much welcome to come and listen to the next session. Thank you so much.